Hey everybody, this is Alexander Fitzgerald or Assassinato, and today we are going to be discussing five ways to beat microstakes games. For those of you who don't know me, I have WPT and EPT final tables, WCOOP and SCOOP wins. My most recent win is the 250k guaranteed, but I play mostly low to mid stakes games just like you guys do, so I know the problems you're actually facing. And let's just get into some of those problems. Let's get into some ways you can start beating micro stakes games for more. Let's start with, let's start with this king seven of spades. All right, guys, let's discuss some micro stakes poker strategy today. Here, fold, call, or raise. Five seconds. All right, that is time. We go ahead and raise here. You can open wider in micro stakes games if no one is three betting you. Most players lose when they flat a three bet out of position. That's why you have to be careful opening wide at more aggressive, talented tables. If you play multi-way pots, you win due to implied odds. And if you play against a flatter from the blinds, you really win. Work to set up pots with out of position flatters. It's easier to do this in micro stakes games due to how micro stakes players frequently flat as opposed to three bet. Obviously, not all micro stakes games play the same, but most recreational players want to see too many flops, which is good for us. When they're flatting, they're not three betting, which opens the door for us to open more. That's why five ways to beat micro stakes games. Number one, open more when no one is three betting you. That first example, that's about as far as I would take it. If you folded that, that's totally fine. But I just wanted to open your mind to how much more you could open in games where people are not three betting you as much. Initial opener in this hand has been extremely loose, playing over 40% of the hands. It is on you. Would you like to full call or raise? Five seconds. All right, that is time. We go ahead and raise here to 1300 and change. The player on the button who cold calls you is loose passive. This is just like your micro stakes games. This is how we create realistic micro stakes strategy. No one wants to fold to your raises. The board comes queen, jack, eight. It has been checked to you. Do you want to check or bet five seconds? All right, that is time. We go ahead and fire a hair above 2K. Villain one folds and villain four calls. The turn is the six of hearts. It's been checked to us. Here, do we want to check or bet? Five seconds. All right, that's time. We fire about 4.2K. Please compare your bet size or lack thereof to the one you see on the screen. Villain four goes ahead and calls. The river is the 10 of hearts. It's been checked to you here. Here, do you want to check or bet 10 seconds? Five seconds. All right, that is time. We fire 4.7K here, get called, and win a nice-sized pot. Guys, you got to slaughter three-bet flatters. If someone is raising and calling with garbage hands, then you don't need much of anything to three-bet them for value. You want to focus on three-betting primarily from the cutoff and button wall you're still learning. This one, I'm trying to show you guys the most extreme versions of all of these concepts, but for the most part, you want to keep it to the fundamentals. Cut off and button in this situation in more later position opens in our first scenario when we were opening more. You want to focus on three betting primarily from the cutoff and button while you're still learning. But sometimes at truly soft tables, you can get away with some wild three bets. Get them heads up and out of position with a capped range and value bet all their chips away. Five ways to beat micro stakes games. Open more when no one is three betting you. Three bet and value bet until their chips are gone. Let's keep it going. You have ace nine of hearts here on the button. Okay, I think most of you are going to go ahead and open. How much do you want to open to? Just open to something. 
And if you go bigger there, I, I like that. Play bigger pots in position with superior hands. Heads up if you can. Villain 32 goes ahead and calls you here. And the board comes ace, king, two. It's been checked to you. Here, do you want to check or bet five seconds? All right, that is time. We go ahead and bet 365. Please compare your bet size or lack thereof to the one you see on the screen. The turn is the eight of diamonds. It has been checked to you. Here, would you like to check or bet five seconds? Okay, that is time. We fire again, 548. And villain 32 calls. The river is the jack of clubs. It's been checked to us here. Here, would you like to check or bet 10 seconds? Five seconds. That is time. We go ahead and get one more bet in here. Villain 32 calls. And Villain 32 has King Queen off. If you thought this hand was basic, go to your database right now and look up triple barrels, then filter for one pair. See what you find. Most people don't do it enough. Everybody struggles to do it enough, uh, myself included. So you will want to really make sure you're getting these in. You should never be content with two streets in micro six games versus players who don't fold enough. Recreational players love showdowns. That's the fun part of their home game. They don't bluff enough post-flop. If they were truly aggressive players, they would likely be playing higher stakes games. You can bet fold more often because they have more bad preflop hands that can call with bad pairs post-flop. They also don't understand turning hands into bluffs. So that's why we're going to add item three here to five ways to beat micro stakes games. Number one, open more when no one is three betting you. Two, three bet and value bet until their chips are gone. And three, value bet rivers. They don't bluff enough. They're not turning their garbage pairs into bluffs. Let's keep it going. All right, so this player has mostly been limping in so far today, but here they raise. On you, would you like to full call or raise? Five seconds. Okay, that is time. This is a fold, believe it or not. Beware of passive players raising. Passive players limp their mediocre in good hands. That means they are raising their great hands. If you want to build a pot versus a great hand, then go ahead and three bet. Normally, if a passive player raises from early position and you have a mediocre hand, you can go ahead and fold. This is about right at that borderline. Again, I'm trying to show you guys the most extreme versions of every one of these concepts, but we do need to be very aware of what we're looking at because in this hand, our passive opponent is likely to be limping king-queen offsuit and ace-jack offsuit. That means we're not getting value from anything when we three-bet. It's more likely the opener has a tight range because they are raising from a short stack. It's even more likely they have a tight range because they are raising into several big stacks and short stacks. That's why we're going to add item four here and the five ways to beat micro stakes games. Open more when no one is three-betting you. Three bet and value bet until their chips are gone. Value bet rivers, they don't bluff enough. They're not turning their garbage pairs into bluffs. And remember, beware of limpers who suddenly raise. They're limping their mediocre and good hands, so their raising range is great hands, typically. All right, here we go. You have queen 10 offsuit facing a raise from villain 24. Let's go. All right, that is time. Go ahead and three bet here. And Villain26 cold calls us and the initial Razor folds. The board comes Ace-8-4. It's been checked to you here. Here, would you like to check or bet? Couple more seconds. That is time. We fire 2.4K into 8,000. Please compare your bet size to the one you see on the screen. Villain26 goes ahead and calls. The turn is the Six of Hearts. Villain 26 checks to you. Here, would you like to check or bet five seconds? All right, that is time. We check here. 
The river is the queen of clubs. Villain 26 bets 12,000, okay? Fold, call, or raise 10 seconds. Five seconds. And that is time. We're going to go ahead and fold here. All right, let's do another real quick. Uh, kings here on the button. You're obviously raising. And the big blind calls you. The board comes queen, queen nine. It is checked to you here. Here, would you like to check or bet five seconds? Okay, that is time. We fire 3.6K here in villain 35 calls. The turn is the ace of spades. It gets checked to us here. Here, would you like to check or bet? Five seconds. That is time. We check here. The river is the four of diamonds, and we face an overbet this time. Full color raise, 10 seconds. Five seconds. Okay, that is time. We fold here. Okay, let's do what? Another. Here we have ace-10 offsuit on the button. We're going to go ahead and raise here. And the small blind calls us. The board comes 10-8-5. Bill and 40 checks to us. Here, would you like to check or bet? All right, that is time. We bet 160 here, and villain 40 makes it 750. Here, would you like to fold, call, or raise? Five seconds. That is time. We call. The turn is the queen of clubs. Villain 40 bets a hair above 1,000 here. Fold, call, or raise, 10 seconds. Five seconds. All right, that is time. We call here. The river is the seven of spades. He fires here. Here, would you like to fold, call, or raise? Ten more seconds. All right, that is time. I can't tell you how many people get entitled and angry when they play micro stakes because they feel they're so much better than the other players. That's why a key part of micro stakes poker strategy is accepting that it is still poker played for money. Many people take it seriously. They don't bluff enough. They're trying to hit flops in win pots at showdown. This is a fold. What is he check raising here that you beat? King 10? Or does he call with that on the flop? Jack 9 got there if you put that in his range. 6, 7, and 9, 7 are not likely hands for him to call with pre-flop from the small blind. I can't tell you how many people get entitled and angry when they play micro six because they feel they're so much better than the other players. You really have to work through these hands. A lot of these players don't bluff enough. They're trying to hit flops in win pots at showdown. In all the other situations, it was very difficult to give your opponent a hand as well that you could beat. Do not pay off nut peddlers. Most grinders at micro stakes are playing too many tables. That means they don't have time to be creative. Most of them raise two pair better, call with pairs, and fold high cards because that's a fun automatic way to play. If you ever have a bluff catcher, you can give them the benefit of the doubt and fold unless they've just been insane, which does happen sometimes at micro stakes, but the vast majority of players are just playing their hands. As you move up in stakes, you will need to call more. Your opponents will be bluffing more. So let's go through this really quick. 
let's back through these hands. We broke down this one pretty quick, but I know you guys will have some questions on some other ones. So in this hand, we beat uh, uh, we beat Jack 10 and that's pretty much it. And that's not a ton of combinations, whereas obviously uh, if they just check all this with an ace high on the flop, uh, they're beating us now. Uh, a queen is beating us now. And when you're on uh, the borderline here on a lot of these situations, just remember a lot of micro six players play to relax. They're not as aggressive as they need to be. So if you can really only give them some bluffs or just some missed draws, a lot of the times they're not even betting all of those missed draws. So you really want to be careful when you're hero calling in those situations. And backing up just a little bit more. In this situation, when the person bets on this river, you have to ask, are they really value betting an eight for that much there? And if they're bluffing here, there's not a ton of combinations that would check call on this flop that uh, go ahead and fire this turn. I, I guess some random high cards on occasion. A lot of the a lot of the gut shots, yeah, well, got got there or made a pair or something along those lines. So might just try to get down to showdown. So it's really hard. This was the simpler of all these questions. It's really hard to give this person a hand that you could really beat. So to wrap this up today, guys, these are the five ways to beat micro stakes games. Just some quick tips you can take with you to the felt next time. For one, open more when nobody is three betting you. Best used. This play is best used at passive tables and a lot of your tables will be passive. So you can, if you've ever wanted to try to be a maniac before, this is your time at passive tables. Try this out. If nobody's three betting you, you will be in a lot of advantageous situations, especially if the blinds call you frequently. Remember to three bet and value bet until their chips are gone and value bet rivers. They don't bluff enough. They're not turning their garbage pairs into bluffs. You can bet fold very thinly versus these players. Remember to also beware of limpers who suddenly raise. They're limping their mediocre and good hands, so their raising range is great hands. And don't give away stupid river calls. They're not bluffing enough. A lot of micro stakes players more or less play their hands, like to call down with their pairs. Uh, they'll fold their high cards early in the hand. They don't really want, I mean, they might float you on the flop, but if they get through to the river, a lot of times they'll try to even check down some of their good A size and whatnot. They don't bluff enough. Usually if these really passive players all of a sudden woke up and decide it's time to put big bets in the middle, they have the hand and you can just go ahead and fold your mediocre hands. All right, guys, that's my time for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to talk to me about private lessons, write me at alex at pokerheadrush.com. If you want to continue your poker training today, uh, go into the information section of this video. I actually, I asked you guys what you want a full masterclass on. So if you enjoyed this video, this masterclass is just an hour, just like this. And I asked you guys what you wanted a full class on. You told me you didn't know what to do with Ace King when you three bet with it pre-flop, missed the flop, continuation bet and got your continuation bet called. So I made an entire masterclass on what to do with Ace King when you hit the hand, when you miss the hand, when you're out of position, when you're in position, be sure to check that out. I think you'll very much enjoy it. If you want to go deeper with your study, go to pokerheadrush.com. That address again, pokerheadrush.com and sign up for my daily strategic newsletter. You get three free training pa packages just for signing up. So if you ever wanted to learn how to triple barrel bluff versus your opponents or three bet, take their chips away. You'll learn how to do that for free just for signing up for that free newsletter. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help us. Uh, and yeah, good luck to you if you're playing today. Take care. I'll see you for the next one of these.